question from Christy O. Brandon, how do you feel about my little sis Kiki dancing with Usher? I know Brandon wouldn't be upset if she was his girl. Oh, no, 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 no. Brandon will definitely be upset. <laughs> I don't want to do that. We pay homage. We can take pictures. And I'm asking, yo, you know, we big fans. My lady a big fan. Can, can, we, can she take a picture? Boom, I'll take the picture. We not dancing and doing all of that. No, that's for me. Uh, <laughs> There's boundaries, respect. It was, it was real close, it was real intimate. Yeah. No, that's me. Legendary. That's what that's that's what we got. Yeah. yeah. You don't get that to the world. It's Usher. Usher sings love songs, <laughs> baby making music, Slow, and man. you yeah. grabbing her singing this type of song, and you Usher. I don't <laughs> even like the way Usher looking at her in the first photo. Right. That's the, yeah, look, you like, <laughs> that's right. what I picked up. I know <laughs> that look. He yeah. said, "Ooh, yeah, that's, that's what ooh, ooh, Kiki." Ooh. The Clippers is good because if you get James, you guaranteed to have at least two stars on the lineup. Because you know Paul might not be there, Kawhi might not be there, and the player he is now, where he's a twenty and ten guy now that's the type of guy they need over there he can be that third option he's going to make a lot of plays and i just like the, i just like the dynamic of the clippers having three stars and him, be, him being back in la i don't really care where james harden goes right. at one point i thought that when he left brooklyn and went to philly you were going to see a level of consistency and focus from him that you've been wanting to see because he was in a more stable environment. Brooklyn was unstable mm -hmm. for a multitude of reasons. I hate to say this, and maybe because I had a little uh, shot of tequila before the show, but yeah, James, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. Sorry to cut you off, Ash, because I, I love where you're going, but go ahead. he's the problem, man. Like he's so talented, dude, so raw, but like, bro, like put the main, keep the main thing first, and he don't do that all the time. MB and James Harden in this phase should be enough. Facts, especially in the East. The talent is still there, and when he's at his best. You're like, holy crap, it's James Harden. Like, where has this version of him been? But you see that like once in a blue moon and half the time, it just more than half the time, it just looks like he does not care out there. Like he's like the Jay Cutler of, of basketball. That's a good analogy. <laughs> the talent, is, is. The wow. talent is there, oh but he doesn't care. Ashley, uh, I'm with you when uh, you write. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he's the Jay Cutler uh, of the NBA. Uh, it, it's comparing apples and oranges. Like if I say Tom Brady's the GOAT, right? And you say LT is the GOAT, mm -hmm. right? How do we even argue that? They're two totally different positions. Yeah. They had two totally different responsibilities. Yeah. That's why in football, it's so hard to label the GOAT, which is why people normally just stick to a quarterback because basketball, you can do that. Because yeah. basketball, everyone has somewhat of the same responsibilities. The stats all align. It's, it's yeah. easier to make that argument. How the hell do I argue LT versus Tom Brady? Right. I think not only myself, but a lot of us in this space have been lazy when it comes to the GOAT <laughs> conversation regarding football, all right, at the highest level. I think the GOAT resides on the defensive side, and here's why. On the offensive side, you need the offensive coordinator, and you need everybody working together to get the job done, whether it's to get the first down, score a touchdown. That's why Tom Brady is special, because he did that at a high level for a very long time. But Tom Brady, right, going out there, if his receiver slips at the top of the route, drops a ball, he doesn't get the job done. On the defensive side, you take a guy like an LT, even an Aaron Donald, and you put them out there. The defensive coordinator can call a bad play. Everybody can fall on the route, and he goes. He can run through two, three people, get a sack or get a tackle for loss, and the defense wins. Mm -hmm. So I think if we're really being intentional and spend time breaking down each position, we will find that the defensive side is where the GOAT is. All right, can we see Brandon Marshall's build a beer running back? Have you guys ever <laughs> built a beer before? I did yes. Not. Uh, it was once cool. a long time ago. Back in the day. Here we go. Why is he a, so small? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ball. worry about that. We Don't worry about ball. that. That's Building such a weird... the ultimate running back, <laughs> Brandon's pick. Vision, Josh Jacobs. You got to go with the guy who's probably the best running back in the NFL right now, right? He led the league. Corey, I repeat, he led the league in, 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 in rushing last year. That takes vision. You gotta be able to see the hole, to hit the hole, and then go. Like, that's Josh Jacobs. There should be no, absolutely no debate here. Mm -hmm. Who has the better vision at the running back position in the NFL? Numbers don't lie. <laughs> Durability. Now look, see, Corey, you see what I did? You see how I, this is called a hedge. 
Because <laughs> people will say, like, if I just put Mark Ingram, I probably would have lost this. Because people are like, Mark Ingram? You can't put the ball. two names. I, 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 who? That's cheating. Everyone, nobody told me the, the rules. rules are one name uh, nobody per section. Said that. Look, okay, well, show pick, me, you got to pick one right now. You can't show, put both. Show me where. Then I, It's easy. Derrick Henry. Okay. How can we debate Derrick Henry? Because, <laughs> you know, I wanted to show Mark Ingram a little love, right? Because we forget about some of these guys that just been around for years. So year after year after year, and super consistent. Now, the reason why I couldn't just put him is because he always split reps. He never was just a guy. He had Alvin Kamara. Mm -hmm. So, of course, he's going to play a little longer. He's going to bounce back a little faster. But Derrick Henry, there's no debate there. And I expect you guys to probably have Derrick Henry here as well because you guys probably looked at my homework and, and, and cheated. <laughs> Derrick Henry, durability. You're talking about a guy who went for 2,000 yards. He almost did it again, right? And he's been extremely durable. And he, pause, has carried the bulk of the load. Right? Like, that's tough for him to do. This is old football. This is guy toting it 20, 25, sometimes 30 times a game. I don't know how he's doing it. And then hands. Oh, I won't be shocked yeah. if Ashley or Corey had, uh, 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 what's his name? The white guy in, in the, with the 49ers, McC McC McCaffrey. McCaffrey. McC McCaffrey. McCaffrey. <laughs> what's his name? Christian, Christian, McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Like, that's easy for you guys. But do you guys not know that Alvin Kamara is damn near a wide receiver? Don't get it twisted because Coach Payton's been gone, you know, and he hasn't been able to put up the numbers he, he he was doing. He was putting up the first five, six years of his career. This dude is a wide receiver. Jonathan Taylor, he's not the fastest in the league, right? He's the second fastest in the league. But I had to put Jonathan Taylor here because he – could potentially be the best running back in the NFL right now. But I have to give it to Josh Jacobs. It's very close. But Jonathan Taylor is that guy. But from a speed standpoint, there's one running back that has clocked a faster MPH than Jonathan Taylor. I don't know if you guys want to play the trivia question or trivia game right now, but I'll keep moving forward. If you guys want to, you guys go ahead. Quickness and moves. I don't think there's anybody more explosive and quicker in a hole than Saquon Barkley. This is... Your 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 best running back. Please vote for me. Building the ultimate build a bear running back. And this is my pick. <laughs> Yo, okay. It's the build a bear running back for me, man. There you Before go. Appreciate that Saquon pick. Uh, is it uh, is it me? I'll next? go last this time around. You sure? Yeah. No, I mean I wanted to save the best for last. Though. We'll switch it up. That's fine. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> um, over the this past weekend, Rick Ross had a pool party. I think it was at his house, right? <laughs> and in front of a, a large crowd, he he tried to take a dip into his pool. And, uh, no, he tried to dive into his pool, yeah, yeah. not a dip. <laughs> yeah, it was a dive. He tried to take a dive into his pool, but uh, it didn't go as planned. We got, yeah, we got the video. There's some heavy ah! jumps. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, knees, knees buckled there. We got a couple different angles from him. Um, yeah, yeah, it didn't go originally as planned for so, him. So here's here's what I would say. First I'm off, crying. Rick Ross, is uh, he's enjoying life right now. It's pretty yeah, cool to see how he's been able to build his empire over the last few years. Uh, or make it even bigger. I remember playing for the Miami Dolphins and, uh, you know, going after <laughs> practice or games and sitting with him and just, you know, watching college football or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I love to see my dog happy and um, also growing. That's his Atlanta crib. That used to be uh, Tyson's crib, right? No, or Holyfield? Uh, Holyfield. Holyfield. Yeah. Yeah. There used to be Vander Holyfield's house in Atlanta, right outside of Atlanta. Um, but he also has a house not too far from here. Okay. He used and, to have so, one in Boca. I remember in my college days, he used to throw the, throw the sickest parties that we used to go to often, the FAU Boca. crew. Underage, yeah. another, another. No, man. it wasn't a club. Who were it was you, a house Ashley? party. Was there, was there alcohol there? <laughs> Ashley, who were you? I can't yes. confirm nor deny. Yeah. But he used to have a house in Boca. You ever hear the line where he says, I picked that B up from Boca and moved her to Miami or whatever? He was talking yeah. about his house. Mm. But when I was in college, he, was, he had his house in Boca still. It was on what they call Billionaire's Row, which oh. is like that... Yep, like, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Boca, but it's like all those houses on the intercoastal right that there, leads yeah. to the bay, kind of like what Indian Creek is down in Miami, like Billionaire's Row. And he had a house there and he would throw the sickest parties like my freshman and sophomore year. So we used to go there because we were too far. Yo, we were too 20 and 25. We were too far to every day make, I mean, every weekend make that drive to Miami. It was like 40 minutes. Yeah, so that's and then Fort Lauderdale right was Boca. cool. Like downtown Fort Lauderdale was cool, but it wasn't like as cool as Miami, mm -hmm. but... So, Those Rick Ross so Rick parties Ross are sick. So, look, I want to use this time to tell Rick Ross, look, I don't know what happened, 
right? That, but it shouldn't happen, right? Because what? He, he should have more stability in his squads <laughs> and his thighs, right? And, and and so he should have been able to actually accomplish what he was trying to accomplish. I think he called it like the double decker flip something. Was he, he trying to up. flip or just jump uh, in? He, he made something up. But I'm, oh. I'm going to use this time because he literally lives probably 10 miles away from us. And I want him to come in, recover. We have hot tubs, cold tubs. We also have physical therapists. So Rick Ross, um, come on in. You know, we're not going to charge you. We'll make sure you are you have a complimentary membership to House of Athlete because that right there, bro, we can't put out there. I don't think he needs recovery. I think he needs a diving board to practice with. Yeah, he yeah. might. He, a lot, some people are saying <laughs> that might be his ACL. Sheesh. He might need surgery. Like, the way his knee buckled. Think about that. If that was an athlete on the, on the field or on the court, we'd be like, oh, the first thing we think about, damn, is his knee over? Okay? Is the season over? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. he ever? I just yeah. don't think Hope he, like, I just... I just think it was like he didn't time the like he didn't realize like with a diving board, you still have to like jump yourself. Like I thought he maybe thought, he the, thought the board was gonna do the work. The air, yeah. no, you know I, what I mean? Like it looked like he was out. jumping on a trampoline. His knee gave out. That knee gave out. So hopefully he's okay. And if he's not, look, we got physical therapists for him right here.